All right, to politics now. Republicans nationwide have unified around one issue as they gear up for a midterm fight that will determine control of Congress. Crime. GOP operatives are centering their midterm message on rising crime rates and defunding the police, a strategy that saw them gain seats in the House in 2020. NBC News reports in uh, retrospectives conducted by Democrats about the 2020 election, the lack of clarity about where they stand on policing was cited as a cause for their disappointing results in several congressional races. This, as a recent poll found, nearly 60 percent of Americans see crime as an extremely or very serious problem in the United States. And Casey Hunt, the president, President Biden's talking, obviously, about spending more money on policing, spending more money on crime prevention. Uh, I'm wondering, is that being picked up on the Hill by Democrats? And is that a message that that moderate and progressive Democrats can move forward with as they go toward the 2022 elections? You know, Joe, I think it's going to be pretty tricky, actually. I think you're right that the president has handled this in a careful way. And you'll remember that uh, Jim Clyburn, the number three Democrat in the House at the time, said, why are we using this slogan? This is a bad plan, politically speaking. It doesn't make any sense. And I think that perspective uh, has settled with most of, of the members of Congress. But there still are progressives who are very focused on this. I mean, there was uh, a bill to literally secure the Capitol building that Nancy Nancy Pelosi, the House Speaker, had to scramble at the last second to make sure she had enough votes for it because uh, there were members of the squad who said this bill gives money to police and we're not ready to vote for that. So, I mean, this is still a very emotional and, and divisive uh, issue inside the Democratic Party. I think this is going to put much more pressure uh, on that, that group to, I mean, they did not necessarily publicize that this was what they were doing uh, in advance, but that is actually what happened. And, I mean, it's clear how quickly this issue has changed. And, you know, we've cited the New York uh, mayoral race that suddenly this has rocketed to the top uh, of, of the list of things that are important to people. And, um, you know, I think President Biden gets that. He remembers, you know, he was around when the crime was a potent issue in a much different way than it's been uh, for the last decade. And I don't think that 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 lesson has been lost. You know, it's interesting. Over the past six to nine months, we've had Democratic leaders on. I've asked each one whether they supported the, quote, defunding of the police. Did they think it was a good idea? Every single one said it was a bad idea. It was a bad slogan. Jim Clyburn's been saying that uh, actually since that phrase first came about. And then Alexi, of course, you had the New York uh, mayoral race uh, where it looked like the ex-cop, the tough on crime guy, was the one who, who rocketed to first place. Uh, let me ask you the same question since you cover progressives for Axios. Uh, is, is there going to be a disconnect between Biden, Jim Clyburn, and the more progressive members of uh, the caucus when it comes to crime, when it comes to funding police or defunding police? I think, as Casey mentioned, this issue is quickly changing. I spoke with Nina Turner uh, last week by phone. She's, of course, running in Ohio's 11th district, um, that congressional race to replace Marsha Fudge. And when Jim Clyburn got involved in that primary and actually endorsed her Democratic opponent, Chantel Brown, he cited defund the police and what he calls sloganeering as the reason why he was endorsing Chantel Brown and not Nina Turner. And when I spoke to Nina Turner, who, of course, is a progressive icon to folks on the left, she is one of Bernie Sanders' senior most advisors. She helped run his presidential campaigns. She said to me, look, I don't even run on defund the police. I have family members who have served in law enforcement throughout my life. I have a more nuanced take on police reform. And yet, Folks like Clyburn seem to be taking this larger kind of anger or rage out at the bigger progressive movement and, as he calls it, sloganeering against these down ballot progressives who are trying to get a seat in Congress. So we're seeing these dynamics already unfold for these folks who are progressive icons and these very vocal progressives, but who are having to walk this weird tightrope, this balance, as Democrats are, are trying and some would say failing to figure out their message on police reform. You know, it, uh, Jonathan Lemire, it really is fascinating looking 
what Republicans are doing and, and the counter from the Democratic Party. Again, leaders have been saying for some time, at least on this show, that they opposed defunding of the police. Joe Biden came out a few weeks ago talking about additional funding for the police. Obviously, they understand this is going to be a top issue as crime rates continue to go up across the country, uh, according uh, to, to one headline after another. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, Jonathan, uh, any future plans from the White House to uh, show Americans that uh, President Biden is tough on crime? Yeah, Joe, the White House feels like they are pretty well protected against the defund the police attack. Biden personally, they point to his long career, his associations with law enforcement, you know, support for the crime bill. Now, obviously, from the 90s, some of that he has uh, withdrawn. He has said we should have done this better. But they feel like that he personally uh, is OK on this issue. And they do it. To, look, they're, they're watching the stats, too. This is why they had that event at the White House uh, just a few weeks ago. They, they recognize this is becoming a top issue for many Americans as crime shootings in particular go up in, in, in a number of places across across the country. And there is concern, though, that the split on this issue, uh, Reverend Sharpton, could be bad for Democrats in the midterms. Their margins are so slim to keep for Democrats to keep control of the House. And they feel like, well, even if President Biden's OK on this, other Democrats may not be. You, of course, you, you care passionately about both sides of the issue, both police reform, which is what a lot of the progressives are mostly focused on. But also, of course, you see the impact of high crime uh, in, in the communities. So what's, how do you think the White House and the Democratic Party at large have they been able to navigate this balancing act? How dangerous is this for them? I think that they have began to navigate it because I think a lot of people have lost the critical core problem, and that is who defines what is a progressive in what community. You must remember that it was in South Carolina that uh, Joe Biden, with Jim Clyburn's support, defeated Bernie Sanders and others. So in many of the communities that they depend on Black community, brown communities depend on the vote to save them in the Congress and save their 50-50 uh, their in the Senate. They put, the definition of what is progressive is not the same. So it is not progressive to people that are dealing with an uptick on gun violence to say we want to take all the money away from uh, uh, police or from programs in those cities. And, and I, I really think there's been a hijacking by some that have, have identified themselves as progressive from those that have had a long record of trying to deal with issues like police reform and, and, and uh, uh, voting reform. You have to remember, everyone has brought up the New York uh, primaries that just was over. We've had two or three at most uh, so-called progressive candidates. 70% of the Democrats voted for who were considered the moderates in liberal New York. So again, I think that people are reading their own tweets rather than reading the mm -hmm. community.